Hello friends and welcome to the DSP project. I'm your host Rupert Brown and this week we're going to carry on talking about the effects rack. In particular this week we're going to cover the macro controls and what you can do with them. Um, just a note, if you haven't already, you can enter the draw to win this beautiful APC20, the very, this very one that the good people at Akai Professional have given me to give to you. Um, if you're interested in winning that, head down to the DSP project dot com slash win but now let's get started okay carrying on from last week we we're talking about the audio effects rack last week I was talking about the chain uh, the, the chain list this week I want to talk about the macro controls so let's put together quickly put a little rack um, fix rack together here I'm going to use the redux again quite like that effect so essentially we've got eight knobs here that we can assign to any parameter. So I, if I, I want to change this uh, down sample knob here, and so I right click on the knob and select Map to Macro 1. You'll notice that Macro 1 renames itself based on the parameter that, that it's now controlling. Um, so if we just play this drum loop, this knob now controls this parameter. And you can see here the, the, the knob is grayed out, it's got a green little a green dot by it. And if I hover over it to try and control it, it won't let me. But I get this message here saying the parameter is controlled by um, the soft sample. So that is uh, that is all good and well. So, but we can actually do <laughs> do a bit more than that. We can uh, start by controlling multiple effects. So if I throw in, let's say, a gate, uh, and if we do the threshold, uh, second mouse button, select map to sample soft. And you'll notice SampleSoft now renames back to Macro 1. Because it's controlling more than one parameter, it doesn't know what to uh, automatically rename itself as. So, um, so it's up to you to, to rename it. So uh, now, if I hit play, if I'm down here, we get the gate happening. If we turn it up here, the, the, uh, the gate lets everything through. Uh, and you know the fun doesn't have to end there. We can add something else. Let's say uh, I don't know an auto filter, and I want to do a high pass. I can and on the frequency second mouse button select to map macro one, and so now as I turn it up, So we're controlling all of these these effects. If we want, we can hide the list in the device view and just have a nice little set of um, eight knobs and have them actually controlling a whole bunch of different controls to create different effects. But it's not really doing what I want it to do at the moment. Um, the, for instance, the gating here is backwards. I really want it so it's on the when it's on the zero mark for um, for no gating to take place and as I turn it up I want the threshold to turn up so in order to change how, how the behavior uh, we select this uh, map mode here and now I can select the the threshold down here which highlights it helps me find it in my list of macro mappings and I'm basically got the minimum and max values here I just want to invert them so I click and drag up and click and drag down and if I take my mini map mode off so now when it's on zero, there's no gating happening, and as I turn it up, I get this gating happening. But also, this I don't want this auto filter here to, to completely cut the audio right out like it is. So I'm going to go to my map mode again. Uh, I can either just select frequency here, or if it's if you've got a big list of mappings, it's easier just to click on the control that you want, and then it will jump to it. So if I've got this selected, and say I want to change the frequency, then it then it finds it for me down here. So I'm going to change this um, maximum minimum, and minimum frequency, uh, and I'm going to bring this down to let's say I don't know about one k, and take my map mode off. So gating comes in. You can hear the bit reduction, and as I turn it right up, you can hear the, the auto filter coming in. But if I crank it right up, I can still hear, I can still hear this the sound. Cool. So now we're getting somewhere. It's kind of doing what, what we want it to do. Um, though you're not limited to a single chain, which is what we're using here. Um, so remember, in the last video, we spoke about multiple chains. So if I open up another chain here, I can actually take. 
Uh, I can even take something we've already got here, like this gate, for instance. I'm going to drag that down here and drop it into this into this chain. So it still remembers the macro mapping, so you can see the threshold still moving there with this macro. So the the difference we're going to have now is we're going to have a clean chain with no, with no uh, effect on it, and then as I turn it up, that clean chain is going to that clean sound is going to start chopping as the gate kicks in, uh, and wh whereas our effects chain here is going to the the just as before, the effects are going to get stronger and stronger, but they're not going to be affected by the gate because the effects are in parallel, not in serial. So uh, let's see what that sounds like. So, so as we wind it up there, we can hear the, the clean chain here. It's got the, the choppy gating action happening and the, the kind of effects chain there is, is not being gated but has that uh, those effects applied to it. And we can control all of this, oh, control all of this from one one nice knob, and we can uh, rename it to whatever we want, something really descriptive like cool FX. Uh, and then we can also select a color as well. Lovely. Um, and we can of course uh, save save this out using the little disc here. So you can just once you've got an FX chain that you really like whether it be for live performance or production you might have like a mastering chain or just a distortion chain we can just pull it pull it back in again and a little hop swap button here if we want to try and uh, try and listen to to other effects but other effects racks so as you can see the macro controls are quite powerful but what I'm going to show you in future videos you get even more flexibility out of them so stay tuned for that. If you do have any questions on this video though head down to thedsbproject.com and leave a comment underneath this video and hopefully I should be able to answer it for you. Also if you want to subscribe while you're there that really helps us out or if you want to get a hold of me direct you can send an email to inbox at the dspproject.com. Finally I want to give one last pimp out to this because I know you want it, the APC20 from Akai Professional. Uh, if you do want to get your hands on that bad mamba jamba then head down to the dspproject.com slash win. That is all we've got time for this week and I'll see you next week.